noise. Also, keep in mind there will be no flash philanthropy. Also, please buy concessions as they benefit our fabulous department. Thank you and enjoy the show. I'm devilishly glad to see you, but who the deuce saw of seeing you in Bath? Why, sure, Master, Madam Julia, Harry, Mrs. Kate, and the postillion, we all come. Indeed. Aye, Master Thornton and the fit of the gout was coming to make him a visit, so he don't mind to get the slip, and whip, all off at now morning. Aye, aye, hasty in all things, or would not be Sir Anthony absolute. Oh, what do tell us, Mr. Fagg? Fagg. <laughs> <laughs> and does young master, old Sir Anthony, will stay to see the captain here? I do not serve Captain Absolute now. Why, sure! At present, I'm employed by Ensign Beverly. Well, I doubt, Mr. Fudge. You had a change for the better. I have not changed, Fanny. No? Why didn't you say you had left, young master? Well, briefly then, Fanny, I must puzzle you no further. Captain Absolute! and Ensign Beverly are one and the same person. The devil they are. Indeed, and the Ensign half of my master being on guard at present, the captain will have nothing to do with me. So, so, what? This is some kind of freak I warrant. But do tell us, Mr. Fadge, the meaning of, you know, I trusted you. You'll be secret, Fanny. As a coach horse. Why, then, the meaning of all this is love. Oh. Why is the mystery of the matter, Hawk? My master is in love with a lady of a very singular taste. A lady who likes him better as a half-paid ensign than if she knew he was son and heir to Sir Anthony Absolute, a baron of three thousand a year. Well, that is an odd taste indeed, but has she got the stuff, Mr. Bash? Is she rich, eh? Rich? Why, I believe she owns half the stocks. Sounds funny, she could pay the national debt as easily as I could pay my washerwoman. She gets her laptop out of gold, her pair of small pearls, and all of her thread papers are made of bacon. Oh, stop her faith on! I warrant she has a set of thousands at least. But does she draw kindly with the captain? Oh, as fond as pigeons. You want to hear her name? Miss Lydia Languish. But. There's an old top aunt in the way. Though, by the by, she has never met my master, for we got acquainted with Miss while she was on a visit to Gloucestershire. Well, I wish they were once harnessed in matrimony. But do tell us, Mr. Fadge, what kind of place is this far? Well, I heard a deal of it is a more than merry-making, eh? Oh, it's pretty well, Fanny, pretty well. It is a good lounge in the morning. My master and I go to the pump house, though. Neither he or I drink from the waters. After breakfast, we saunter on the parade or play a game at the billiards, but in the evening, we dance! <laughs> but, but down the place, I'm sick of it. Not a fiddle or a card after eleven, though Mr. Falkland's gentleman, Dupin, and I keep it up a little in private parties. I'll introduce you there, Fanny. Oh, You'll like him very sure much. Sure, I know Mr. Dupin. His master is to marry... Madam Julia. Indeed, but Fanny, you must polish a little, and indeed you must, indeed. Oh, oh Mark, Mark Fanny. Oh, shucks, it is the captain. Is that the lady with her? No, no, that's Madam Lucy, my master's mistress's maid. But I must away with this news. Well, say, he's given the money. Well, Mr. Fanny. Oh, goodbye, Fanny. I have a meeting at Guide's porch this evening at eight. Meet me there, and we'll make a little party. <laughs>